Hi everybody, it is Nat from Studio Hacks here. And in today's video, I'd like to show you how you can release your music online to platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or any uh, of the other hundreds of digital music platforms where we uh, can download and stream music so your fans can get access to your music and you can get paid. Uh, now, I've released quite a lot of music over the years and um, I released a few albums uh, back in the day on CD Baby um, when they actually you would actually send them CDs um, and then they would have a digital version as well. Um, I've also used Ditto um, and I've got some upcoming releases of my own music um, and I've been shopping around um, because I wasn't particularly happy with the fee structure and the support I got on those two platforms. And I've settled on what I feel is the best platform for me. And I can highly recommend DistroKid. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about why I think DistroKid uh, is one of the better, if not the best, uh, digital aggregators. Now, a digital aggregator, digital music aggregator, is what you're going to need as an independent artist to get your music onto all of the platforms. So basically, they take your you upload your music you put all the information in then they take care of all the rest which is really fantastic now there are a lot of digital music aggregators uh, out there these days back when i first started releasing music there was only really a couple of options now there are literally dozens of companies that will offer these kinds of services and it's really important that, that, that you know a few key points before selecting your digital music aggregator and how you're going to be releasing your music the price is really important. Some companies charge an annual fee, other companies charge a fee per release, and then other companies claim that they, they're offering the uploads for free, but they'll take a large commission out of every sale that you make. So you need to kind of realize if you're just releasing one album, you may want to just pay somewhere to upload a one-off fee, or if you're going to be releasing a lot of music, um, the annual fee companies might be good. The other key factors are how fast the music is going to be released. So, um, you know, back when I was releasing music on, on some of the older digital music aggregators, it would take weeks and weeks. I waited a month once, uh, so I had to, you know, I got sick of waiting and then eventually I got the notification, your music is now on iTunes. Um, one of the great things uh, I found about DistroKid is that they're, um, they will release it within sometimes 24 to 48 hours. It's really quick. It's a lot quicker than, than most of the other um, companies on the market. Now, if you're shopping around for a digital music aggregator, there is a great uh, blog uh, by this guy called Ari. Um, I've been following Ari's take uh, for quite a while. And this is a comparison chart. You can see here there's so many companies. Um, some of the big ones are sort of TuneCore, uh, Reverb Nation, Ditto, DistroKid, CD Baby. So you can you can compare, um, you know, all the things like the price, the speed of the uploads, and all these other factors. Let's have a closer look at some of these stats. So um, this is really important. So a company like CD Baby, they will charge you ten dollars. Uh, I believe these prices are in US dollars. Um, ten dollars uh, for a single to release that, and then forty nine dollars for an album and that's a one-off fee um whereas so that's really good i guess if you were releasing only one album forever and you just want to pay that one-off fee um, but i'm planning on releasing a lot of music over the next year or two um, and i have a, a number of different artists so for my electronic music um, i'm going to be using my producer name but i also want to use my own name nat pike for some of the acoustic music that I'm releasing. And then I'm also in a duo um, and we're going to be releasing uh, a couple of singles um, early next year. So uh, this is why this is uh, DistroKid here. I'm going to be um, having at least two artists. So I, I'm more than happy to just pay a yearly fee and then can release as much music as I want and have that freedom to release, to, to be prolific really and just release lots of music. You'll see here that uh, also CD Baby 
um, will take a 9% commission on each sale, whereas DistroKid takes no commission, you keep all, the, all of the royalties. So these are the sort of, this is why it's really good to dig around in this chart and find some of the hidden fees. You'll see that this company here, I'm not familiar with them, AWOL, um, say that they don't charge a fee to upload it, but they're taking 15% of every sale. Um, so the other the other thing you really want to look for in a digital music aggregator is customer service as well. Oh, my mic's drooping here. Just a sec, I'll fix this. Okay, microphone is fixed. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to go over to DistroKid here. Um, I'm logged into the, the back end of my artist page here. Um, so this is my account. I haven't actually released my music yet. It's uh, just in the process of the final uh, mixing and mastering at the moment. But when, as soon as it's ready, I'm gonna go here and click upload and I'll show you how this back end works here. So you can choose the stores that you would like to release the music to. And I just tend to keep them all ticked because I want my music in, in every platform. Then you select the number of songs. So for me, it's gonna be five songs. It has not been previously released. It will be under the name Nat Pike. Um, now, it's important that you spell this correctly. If you were um, going to have this under a different name, um, then it will it'll check for you if there's already an artist on Apple or Spotify. So let me, uh, this is sometimes, this is a possible name I've been thinking of releasing some of my electronic music under, but I found that there's some, another artist already named Nat King. And then you can actually go, and this is a really good service. You say, that's me, or no, I'm a different Nat King. So you can still, they will still let you release music. It's okay if there's two artists with the same name. But I might, I might want to rethink that and find a producer or an artist name that has not been taken yet. So you select the release date. And um, sometimes it's imp uh, good to set the release date a week uh, ahead. And that helps you get into playlists. Um, you can actually see some more information by clicking that link. And then um, you, you, there is an option for pre-ordering as well. If you have, whoop, okay. if you have a um, big user base of fans, you can pre-order. The record label is set uh, as a default uh, to just a, like a DK distro kid. So you, if you have a record label, um, or if you plan on creating a record label, you can put that. Sometimes I just put um, independent or something in there. Um, now the album album art, it tells you, which is really nice. It tells you the, the size, 3000 by 3000 pixels. Um, and it gives you some um, information here about what you should, uh, you know, some guidelines for the artwork. You pop your album title in there. Um, the pricing, you can select the, you have control over the pricing of, of the album, which is really good. And then you're selecting genres and uh, things like that. The song, so this is the, the spot down here now. It's, it creates a, an exact duplicate of this same little uh, set of instructions for each song. So you say the song title, and that will give you some guidelines for naming your tracks which is which is very handy so they give you a lot of really good information so that you don't make any mistakes in this um, i always upload a high quality wav file um, 48 kilohertz and uh 24 bit um, is usually my uh, standard and it will generate an isrc code for you um, if you don't know what that is that's um, a identifier, an international identifier code for your song, and it helps for collecting royalties. Sometimes if you work through a publishing company or a performing rights association, um, you can get the IRC, ISRC codes uh, beforehand from them, but I prefer just to have them automatically generated by DistroKid, then I don't have to think about that. Um, now you can, if it was written, if your song was written by more than one person, you can share um, the the royalties with someone, or you can also. This is fantastic. This is also one of the main reasons uh, that I've come over to DistroKid because I'm planning on releasing some acoustic covers. Um, I've been recording a lot of acoustic covers, so you can actually um, normally you have to get permission through a, a company called the Harry Fox Agency. Um, and it's really expensive and it's a pain in the neck 
Um, so um, DistroKid actually have an automatic system, which is really cool. And it's a very small fee, a lot cheaper than if you go directly through the Harry Fox agency. Um, it's $12 a year, I think, to license a cover song, which means that you can record a cover of someone else's song, release your own version of it, and just pay a, a small licensing fee, uh, $12 a year. And then if you if you sell a couple of thousand copies of that via iTunes or you get a lot of streams, you will make way more than that back um, in the royalties and, and sales. So that's fantastic. And then it checks the, the original uh, song title and the artist's name. It also shows you here that um, sampling is pretty much heavily discouraged and remixes and I won't really go into that, but you can read this uh, in, in more detail if you like. Um, so this is the section where you would add other songwriters if you've co-written a song and then you have to let them know if there's explicit lyrics and you can upload two versions of your song, a normal edit if there's swear words in it and a radio edit. Sometimes I have a normal version. I don't tend to have any explicit lyrics in my music because I like to have it available to as many audiences as possible. Um, but um, I, if I've got a like an extended version, like sometimes I might have a five or a six minute version of a song that I really love and I want that to be one version, but then I've made a cut down version that I specifically want to promote to radio stations, uh, a two and a half minute version or three minute version, somewhere around that length is the golden time for radios. So you can upload a radio edit as well. Um, this will be the spot where you say if it's an instrumental or not. And then once you've gone through all of this, you get all the way down and they have some amazing uh, optional um, sort of services where you you pay uh, a little bit for some of these things and, and it saves you a lot of time and effort. So um, if you want your music, if, if you know that other people are going to be using your music on a service like YouTube, um, they can manage the copyright for the YouTube content ID system and collect their money on your behalf for a small fee. Um, which is really great. And there are some other services here like getting your music on Shazam. So if somebody hears your song in a club or a coffee shop and they think, wow, that's a great song and they hit Shazam. Um, if you select this um, um, little box here, you can get your music in Shazam. So people are able to Shazam your music, which is amazing. Um, I am definitely going to be selecting that one because I know how much music is discovered through via Shazam. Um, so there's all, all sorts of options here. And then when you're done, um, basically your music will be up uh, online within 24 to 48 hours is the usual time, which is, which is a great, um, one of the quickest times out of all the aggregators. Um, so DistroKid actually reached out to me. They, they saw that I had created an account and um, they really liked my YouTube channel and they've actually offered for my subscribers only a special 7% discount on all their services. And uh, that's via the link um, with a slash studio hacks at the end of it. So I'm going to leave that link in the description. Um, and I would highly recommend if you want to release your music online, do some shopping around, um, go to Ari's Take, see which service is right for you. And if you decide um, to go via DistroKid as I have, um, make sure you use that link in the description of this video uh, to get your 7% discount. Um, and if you like this video and you thought the content was valuable, make sure you subscribe um, and pop a comment in um, if you want any more information. Um, about releasing your music online and I look forward to creating a lot more content uh, now that I'm a bit more free up from the heavy load of studio work that I had. I'll see you in the next video.